Alrighty guys, welcome back to the second video in the series. This is the computer networking series. So, the agenda for today is we're going to explore further into network media. We're going to explore a bit further into NIC, into the NICs, network interface cards. We're going to explore wired network technology and wireless network technology, okay? So, this video will be still in the... Uh, we're not going to be doing IP addresses and none of that stuff, but more so just the groundwork to get to that stage, okay? So last uh, lecture, we covered OSI models, we covered the basics of the NIC, network media, but we're going a bit, a little more in depth for this one. And then, yeah. Okay. So let's go here. So we've got two categories of media. They include wireless media and wired media. You've also got two major categories of the wires, or well, not wires, but transport, as in how information is transported, which is copper wire and fiber optics. So if you can see here, You've got copper, which is like the Ethernet and all that kind of stuff. You've got fiber optics, which is also Ethernet. Um, then you've got wireless. So there's like three mediums which you would use. Typically, these are like the most common. Of course, you could use other things, but this is what's the standardized uh, system that people use. Okay. And I'm sure you guys have them at home and you have all these different things that you can see. Next bit. Criteria for choosing network media. So some of the criteria you'd be looking at in terms of choosing, uh, if you're using fiber optics, if you're going to be using a uh, copper or Wi-Fi, you want to be looking at things like how much how much data is going to be sent during the given time, and that's usually measured in megabytes per second. So maybe you, if you're in like a system where you need to have information given to you really fast, you need probably like fiber optics. But if you're in a situation where you don't, then you maybe Wi-Fi would be the good choice in that case. It depends on the use case and what you want to use it for. Now, you've also got different things like distance. Now, each cable can only carry so far before the signal is weakened. Same goes for Wi-Fi. There's like a certain amount of distance you can go before the, the, the signal is weakened, okay? And you've got interference, physical objects, radio waves, interference, etc. There's all sorts of things that can come in that one. That can apply for, uh, that can apply for Wi-Fi, that can apply for, uh, the cabling, like radio frequency, well, not radio frequency, but like uh, tear and wear on uh, different things that's interference, okay? Uh, you got security, you got eavesdropping and copper wire. And for fiber optics, you got carries light, but it's not susceptible to interference or eavesdropping because that's sending light pulses and that's going to be decoding that instead of sending electrical pulses. So you can't really drop in and eavesdrop the information. It's just a lot more difficult and no one does it, okay? So the types of cables that are typically found in uh, networking systems. So coaxial cable, once this is the predominant one used for most networking systems. Uh, it's inexpensive and easy to install. Started to phase out in the early 90s. Still using connecting a cable modem to the wall outlet of your cable TV internet provider installs. I have one in my living room. It's, it's like that. It connects to the wall. And then from there, it connects to the modem. Okay. And it depends on the system you have installed in your house. Next one's a twisted pair cable. So this is a, they can form the two categories. You've got the UTP and the STP. So the STP is the shielded and the UTP is the unshielded. The difference is one of them has a layer of protective covering on the top that can stop interference, stop, uh, you know, environmental issues, maybe like something lands on it and where it would actually break the wire, but this time it was safe from the protective layer. And yeah, so that one's, typically regard better and that was also typically regarded as the faster one the shielded one because it's more encased and just it stops like any interference and so on and so forth okay so there's the two you got there now has a braid sheath inside the material or foil wrap um as i just said it's better in noisy environments or high bandwidth location so we are crossover cables so crossover cables are meant to connect uh, devices of the same type to each other so pc to pc switch to switch router to router and then straight through cables are meant to do different types like PC to router, et cetera, like that, okay? Um, we're not going very in depth, but that's just the basics of that. Now, DTE versus DCE devices. Uh, the DCE uh, provides a clock rate and DTE synchronizes on provided clock rate, okay? So the DC provides a clock rate, which is router A, and that's specifying, I'll read this description here so you can understand. The clock rate typically refers to the speed at which a processor executes instructions measured in Hertz, HZ, um, on the other hand, DT commonly stands for data terminal equipment, which refers to the device at the endpoint of the communication circuit. So this one sets the clock rate, this one synchronizes it, and that's basically saying how much information is being sent and over like the period of time, etc. It's like setting 
that. That's the best way I could explain it. It's still a bit tricky to understand. Uh, onward to wireless networking. So here's a basic topology uh, of system, internet, cable modem, wireless router, computer, laptop, blah, blah, blah. Twisted pair patch cable, and then you the cable from cable provider over here. Now, in wireless, you get uh, wireless networking, LANs are usually attached to wide networks. So, a wireless LAN, sorry. So, a modem is generally connected to, you know, um, something else. And then that sort of stems, and then the Wi-Fi router can then receive and give and also etc. So most small businesses and home devices used uh, home networks typically use a device called a router that combines the functions of an access point, AP, a switch, and a router. Okay. Um, if you can see here, this is just like comparison of LAN media characteristics. Uh, you got fiber optics, wireless different cables and then like this is how much the distance can go like cable length um etc the bandwidth installation interference cost blah 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 um uh speed so wired ethernet is faster than wireless then uh yeah obviously wi-fi is becoming faster over the recent years though stability wi-fi is susceptible to environmental factors radio waves can block stuff walls microwaves etc um Mobility installation, we get kind of common sense. Security transmission can be interrupted more easy than wired transmission. Okay, so wireless is probably more easy to access and to potentially breach a security threat of some sort. NIC further information. Attached to a computer, and a network requires a NIC to create them and mediate the connection between a computer and a networking medium. So here's one, we looked at this in the last lecture. But this is what it looks like, and this is what the one looks like here. A NIC can be built to the motherboard, a separate adapter card that slides into one of the motherboard expansion slots. So if you see here, you know, this is the expansion slot. Well, this one's inbuilt. Okay, so it just goes in, you can plug Ethernet in, from there will magic happens. And now NICs uh, provide a MAC address. A MAC address is a unique and is stored in ROM on the NIC, okay? RM is abbreviation. I'm not too sure what it means. I have to look that up later, but you know, uh, that's on the NIC. And then a macro just looks like this. It's basically like the physical address of the device that you're on. Okay. Every device has one that's connected to a network and that's how it is located, the individual device. Because when devices, when things get sent over the, uh, the net, they go to the IP network. And then from there to define and decipher which exact device you have to go to the MAC address. Uh, to summarize the possible values for each digit in the MAC address, you've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 9, and you've got A, B, C, D, all the way to F, and that's your possible combinations. So 0, 0, 1, A, F, 3, F, F1, 4, C, C, 6, okay? The broadcast address is F, 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 okay? We understand that. Uh, NIC further information, I think, oh, that's already done. you got wireless NIC, so in this one, this is what a wireless one would look like. So wireless NICs connect to a network using this SSID. I'm sure you've seen that on the computer. It's basically a service set identifier, which is just like the Wi-Fi name. Uh, it's the name assigned to your network. And you know, over here you've got these little things that expand out like antennas. Act they're wireless ones. I've had them on my laptop too, etc. So that's just the wireless version of that instead of an Ethernet. So instead of instead of receiving it through a cable, you receive it through waves in the air. Okay. Uh, the function of the NIC is to receive incoming messages. So it receives these bit signals and assembles them into frames, verifies the destination address, if the destination MAC address is its own MAC address or its broadcast address, removes frame header, sends resulting packet to the network protocol. This is when it receives it. So if, if to illustrate that further, it's sort of like when it receives, it goes down here, goes to the NIC, comes back to here, goes up, and then you know it kind of processes that information and it then positions it up to the next protocol and the next layer, well, per se. I mean, it's the best way I can visualize it. Um, receive packets from the network layer. So this is when you're receiving information. So information is going to be received to the NIC, creates a frame by adding a MAC address and error check. So receives the information, okay, from the network layer, frames it up, converts the frames and bid signals suitable for the medium, and then transmits them out, okay? So that's cool. Here's what it looks like in a diagramic format. So you've got, let me just move this over here. You've got the network protocol. So actually, but this one's going, this is incoming. So 
incoming bits and signals on the network medium. Um, this is the physical layout transmitting this information. Comes in, converts bit signals to frame. So frame header, frame trailer. Verifies the MAC address. Here, here. Removes frame and header. Sends packet to network protocol. Verifies checks uh, credit. Uh, CRC, which stands for something cycle redundancy check or something. Yeah, something like that. Check cycle redundancy cycle. I don't know. But uh, here it is. It's just like a check to verify error checking information. And then, yeah, it sends it to the network protocol. It goes up here. And that's now your, your information. It'll be further processed. Okay. Uh, um, this is outgoing, I believe. So network protocol information is coming down. Uh, receives the packet, adds the frame and header to the thing, the um, packet, converts the frame into small bits, into bits for transmission over the medium, and then it sends it out. Okay? So it's like the inverse of that one. Ethernet. Yeah, cycle, cyclic redundancy check. Uh, Ethernet detects damages frames. The error checking in the code is called blah, blah, blah. We just went over that. Uses CRC to determine that data is unchanged. If a frame is detected as damaged, it discards the notification. Um, this is the Ethernet like header format, frame format, sorry. Ethernet 2 uh, frame type used typically T TCP. Um, yeah, frames must be between 64 and 1518 bytes. This is the information that you've been given, and that's what has to be in the header slash frame. <laughs> Wi-Fi modes of operation. Wi-Fi can operate in the two in one of two modes. Infrastructure, ad hoc. Uh, infrastructure uses central point, a central access point, while ad hoc uses no central device. Data travels from device to device like a bus. Sometimes called peer-to-peer -peer mode. Okay. Wi-Fi channels and frequencies. Wi-Fi can operate uh, um, two two point four gigahertz and five point zero gigahertz frequencies. 2.4 is usually 2.41 through through and 2.484 divided into 14 channels spaced 5 megahertz apart, as you can see this. Um, I'm not too familiar with all this, but that's just how it, that works, okay? You probably have to look at that one in more in depth. But um, some basics about the different frequencies. So this is your lower frequency. Lower data rate, more susceptible to interference, and there's more devices using the spectrum. Larger coverage area, better at successfully penetrating solid objects. Higher data rate, less susceptible to interference, and usually has fewer devices using this frequency. Smaller coverage, less successful at penetrating objects. So from my understanding, 2.4 is more of a dragged out wave, while 2.5 is a more of a wave like that. So it comes higher data rate. That one's more dragged out but it's more easy to penetrate through objects, etc. Okay? In the next topic, we're going to be getting to the meat of the lecturing. We're going to be going over the IPv4 addressing the internet protocols. This is going to be dealing with IP addresses. Sub, uh, we're going to be getting subnetting, how they all work, what's a subnet, how does what's the network portion, what's the host portion, the IP address, and that information in the next lecture. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.